He said, to the extent I desire to move through you, you must allow me to cut on you. The Leader's Cut. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Leader's Cut. You can obviously see one of my favorite humans on planet Earth is mm -hmm. with us today. I seriously love you so much. I love you. It's... it's it's just not supposed to be this this wonderful. <laughs> Doing life together is just, it's not fair. It's its an unfair fight. And yep. when we get to sit down, it's some of my favorite times uh, where we get to talk. And today, we get to talk about something that uh, I think you're way better, going back to the early days, you're way better than I was. Uh, I might be one of the worst at this topic <laughs> in the early days. I don't think so, but. If I will, you say so. It was, it was all before you, though. Right, right. That's I got it true. all out of my system yeah, for yeah. five years before you because the Lord knew I would lose you <laughs> if, if, <laughs> if, if I sucked at humility. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, so uh. <laughs> what we're going to talk about today is humility. Yep. And so I got lots of questions Yep. Uh, that I'm just going to fire your way. Okay. Question number one. Mm -hmm. what's, what does life typically look like before humility? Before you learn how to walk humbly before God and man, mm -hmm. what could one expect life to typically look like with um, an absence of humility? Um, it's going to look... Um, I got to speak from the outside looking in because when you ask that question, the first thing that most people would think is the, antith the antithesis, right? Mm -hmm. like, well, before humility you're probably prideful or arrogant, but really before humility, there's a gross lack of self-awareness, mm. a gross lack of self-awareness. Prior to humility, the person walking around absent of it has a gross lack of self-awareness and it doesn't just manifest in pride or in arrogance. It just, it, it can manifest in embarrassing ways because you can't see yourself. It's cluelessness. You, you don't hear yourself. You don't see yourself. Um, and, and then you can't make adjustments if, you, if you're not attuned to you, if you're not aware of you. And uh, the majority of people walk around self-conscious, not self-aware, mm -hmm. right? And so um, that's what it looks like. It's just, I, I, I look at people who lack humility and there is, there's just a large blind spot that they walk around with. Do you think, so there's a phrase out there, fake it till you make it. Hmm. Give me your thoughts on the, as it relates to a conversation of humility and confidence. Yeah. Because you can be both of those things. You, Absolutely. But you can't be walking in pride and humility simultaneously, but you can walk humbly, confidently. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. But this idea of fake it till you make it, um, sometimes I feel like it causes people to overdo the confidence thing. Mm -hmm. And if one isn't truly humble, mm -hmm. then they're just going to look like a donkey. <laughs> they're just going to look like a donkey. <laughs> That's exactly what they look like. So they, they, they're trying to send the message, yeah. I'm confident I can do this. Right, right. But they, 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 it's no, hideous. It is. So when you, when you think, just, I'm pretty sure that you were going to start describing my life when I asked the question, what, what can one expect life to look like before humility? I really thought you were going to go. Preston at 23, but <laughs> thankfully you weren't there yet. It precedes at 23. me. Yeah, so absolutely. I, I feel, I, I, I just, I'm grateful. It's, it's, it's almost like getting to get the worst years of marriage out before you get married. That would be it's ideal like, for everybody. Even, right. That's exactly I didn't even right. know you were like that. Exactly right. Yeah. yeah, yeah you, got it out of my system that, before you. That's right. Uh, yeah. I kind of faked it mm -hmm. until I made it. Yeah, uh, but I, it's horrible advice to me. It is. It, it's. It seems like better advice just to say learn humility first, right. even if it makes you look like you can't do something. Yep, absolutely. Learn humility. Yeah, uh, and that for me, I I didn't think you could be humble and and act like you've been there, act like you've done it. Right. I just thought you had to kind of be shoulders pinned back. Yeah. 
prance like a peacock. Yeah, just, absolutely. You know, yeah. I think for a lot of younger ones. Yeah, for sure. That whole fake it till you make it. If if you were hiring somebody yep. who hadn't done it yet, but right. they were fake it till you make it, yep. out of confidence. Yeah. Um, or someone who had the same level of experience, but mastered humility. Yep. Who would you be more likely to pour into? The latter. And why? So um, you're one of the best question askers I've ever met in my entire life. So um, uh, as you were talking about that, I'm I'm looking at 20, I'm looking at Tim in his 20s, okay? So I give my life to Jesus, January 14th of 1996. Um, and in 18 months, I literally spiritually suck my parents dry. Hmm. They were... They were spiritually dehydrated by me. <laughs> they were, by the time I left to move to Texas, there was nothing else they could put in me because every single day I was reading my Bible and then asking them a question and then reading my Bible and asking them a question and then listening to some sermon then asking them a question and then going to some Bible study and then asking them a question and then finding out, oh, this person's been saved for three years and then asking them a question and then I was, my appetite was voracious because mm -hmm. I wanted to know, right? Yeah. So the, the, the problem with fake it till you make it is the, the people that are older than you know that you don't know. 100%. It's embarrassing. They know you don't know, right? <laughs> and so you acting like you know actually makes it even that much harder for you. Because mm. if you have a really good mentor, coach, business mentor, like this doesn't just have to be church stuff. Right. If you fake it like you know it, then they're going to give you something like you know it. Mm -hmm. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to fumble it. You don't know how to steward it. <laughs> you don't know what to do with right. it. Right. I have found my life hack when I was in my 20s to getting people to tell me what they knew was to tell them I have no I idea know. what I'm supposed to be doing here. 100% there is no literally 100% of the time Preston it endeared them to me. Absolutely. And they gave me more than what I even asked for because I didn't try to act like, right. I know what I'm doing. I'm here. I'm like, how do you preach that message in 20 minutes? And then in 35 minutes, then they taught me editing. I didn't, I didn't ask for editing. I didn't know. How did you edit your message? I just wanted to know how do you take one message in one setting and do it for 20 minutes and then take the same message and do it in 35 minutes. And then they taught me something called editing. I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> I thought it was all the anointing. <laughs> so fake it till you make it puts you in a, puts you in a bad situation. You're going to embarrass yourself. But here's the other thing. You're not going to get what you, you're not going to get the knowledge you need to get to the next level. And that's, that's the part that's so bad about it. See, I thought you had to fake it till you make it to get into the room. Mm. And to your point, what I learned mm -hmm. was fake it till you make it might get you an invitation into the room. But the second they say, they assume you know, because yep. you faked it. Yeah. So they assume there are certain things that you understand. Right. So then a, a mentor would say, you know, it's like da 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 da. That's right. And I'd go, oh, yeah. I'm having <laughs> no idea what they talked about to me. I had no idea what they were talking about. And I, I would do this. It just bobbleheading. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then and and what did a hey, and what does that lead to? Next time they ask you a specific question. So now with specificity, you ask me a question. And I'm gonna have to be honest and say, mm. I don't know. Mm. And they're assuming because the question they asked was two steps behind the thing I said I already knew. Right. That's exactly I put right. my foot in my mouth so many times faking it. Yeah. Because someone just told me. Yeah. Listen now. Yeah. Fake it till you make it. Yeah. The goal is to get into the room. Yeah. And you know what I learned? 
The goal isn't to get in the room. It's not. The goal is to get in the room and steward. That's exactly right. Whatever moment that's God exactly has right. me in. That's exactly but right. But if I'm faking it, yeah. then the only thing that's going to happen in the room yeah. is false. That's exactly right. There ain't anything good that's going to go down. That's exactly right. Okay. So we address, don't fake it till please you don't, make it. Please Even if that's only that. for two of you like me. Yeah, please don't, don't do that. Don't fake it till mm -mm. you make it. Mm -mm. The best leaders mm -hmm. are looking for humility. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about mentoring last time. Mm -hmm. Good, healthy leaders mm -hmm. are looking for humble they are. students. They are. They're, they okay? absolutely are. So let's talk about what are the marks. You've already hit on one, mm -hmm. saying I don't know. Mm -hmm. But what what do we see as kind of the marks of a healthy, mm -hmm. humble human? Yep. So um, self-awareness, right? I go back to this, and I just want to flesh it out a little bit. So scripture says, humble yourself, right? That's what scripture says, humble yourself. The glaring implication to the statement is that you know when you're not humble. Mm -hmm. If he's telling you to humble yourself, <laughs> the glaring indication is you know when you're feeling yourself. <laughs> and at the moment you're feeling yourself, humble yourself. Yep. So for me, that's always led to deep introspection. I'm an introvert, so and I spend a lot of time in my head. And I'm always going over, what did I say? What did I sound like? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um I don't think people have as many blind spots as they say they do. They just ignore looking in that direction. Mm. So I, I have made, it's just a, it's just craft to me after all these years that I am always just ensuring that how am I feeling? Can I locate, I have a feeling. What's the emotion? Why am I feeling this? I had that conversation. If it stirred up something, it's more about me than it is about the person that stirred it up in me. So then I'm curious, why am I feeling that way? Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? What about that angered me or what about that bothered me so yeah, much? You're really good at digging around. Yeah. Like it's been two or three days. Why is this like when uh, Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, right? It, it triggered something in me and I had to go see my therapist and I found out there was some stuff that I felt like I was proverbially, proverbially slapped. You know what I mean? Like there's some stuff that I took on the chin and didn't react to in the same way Chris did. And I didn't like the way that felt that somebody could get away you with that. You saw it in, from a different point of and view. I saw it from a completely yeah. different point of view. So that level of introspection is very, very healthy. And again, if scripture tells me that I need to humble myself, it's implying that I can be aware when I'm not humble. Right. And the more we can govern that, it's great. Through temperance, self control, we're going to always be in a heart posture that says, I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to apologize. <laughs> you know what That's I mean? Great. I'm ready to preemptively say, hey, this could have come across wrong and just allow you to be like, bro, I didn't even take offense by that. Like, you didn't even need to apologize. Okay. But I just want you Still. to know, I know it. Yeah. Right. So, I just think that's very, very important. So, so self-awareness is important. Um, curiosity is important. If you don't have curiosity for yourself, I'm not talking about criticism. I'm talking about curiosity. Why do I tick like this? Why do I think like this? Why do I behave like this? Why do I get funny when 11 people walk in a room? Why am I always looking for a corner and trying to make eye contact with one person? <laughs> Just like, oh, like, like, I know it's not, it this, this doesn't say it in the Bible, but know thyself is a very good proverb. Absolutely. It, it ain't in the Bible, but that's a very good proverb for, for you to grow in humility is to know there's some stuff I can take and there's some stuff I can't take. There's some places I can go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay. So, so humility can keep you out of uh, 
unnecessary temptations. Give you a case in point, because, you know, we're going to keep it a buck. Okay. So I go to Atlanta and uh, I walk into uh, this place to eat. And the hostess is there and she's attractive, right? Now, attraction is not planned. You don't get up in the morning and go, I hope to see somebody more, not more, but as beautiful as Juliet, right? So, but I noticed that she's attractive. I'm now aware of that. We sit down and I tell Hector, who's with me, hey, that person, I became aware that that person's attractive to me. And so I don't expect to have any more interaction with her. She's a hostess. She's not our waitress, whatever. But I'm letting you know for accountability. And see, it's just, I stay curious about myself. Yeah. I felt it. I noticed it. And I wasn't going to play myself right. into some type of subtle flirting that even Hector can't pick up right. on. And then I'm, um, hey, I'm going to go to the restroom real quick and oh, I'm going to go back around the front and I get another menu. Know thyself. Yeah. Timmy's flesh has not always been saved. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I have a very promiscuous background prior to being married for the last 24 years. So I don't want to play myself. Well, I won't play myself if I'm humble enough right. to not keep it to myself. Right? right? And try to act like I'm stronger than what I really am. That's that's a hack that I think if people had, we but, wouldn't see people having these falls. But you're jumping into the deep end of the pool. I'm so don't act like you're you're in an, an ankle deep water because, Timmy, <laughs> stop, stop. You have that look on your face. Listen, here's what I mean. It, do you know how hard it is for most people to be sitting at a table, no matter how close the friend they're sitting with, mm. how, how close they feel to that person to say, hey, just need to say this out loud. Yeah. That's an attractive. I felt yeah. attracted right there. Yeah. Just need to say it out loud. Yeah. Doesn't absolutely. mean anything. Absolutely. But I, this, I need to be able to. Yeah. Most. <laughs> I'm not going to ask a question because you, I don't know how you're going to answer it. <laughs> I just don't think enough people are humble enough to go. To, to embarrass themselves a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the other side of fake it till you make it yeah. is fake it like it doesn't exist. <laughs> this is why I'm trying to come at you right now because this is what most do. They're like, no, no, she's not attractive. I'm not yeah. trying. No, yeah. I mean, oh, I didn't even notice her. Yeah. That's a. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. Guy, You're playing we, yourself. Stop. You're playing stop. yourself, fam. Stop. Absolutely, yeah. I remember James Robinson saying years ago, he said, the first look, is impossible to get around. Absolutely. It's the second look. That's absolutely correct. That can cost That's you. That's absolutely correct. Yeah, absolutely. But the humility to say, especially with someone, you know, if you're trying to impress them. Yeah, no, no. It's impossible That's to be humble. That's a mentee. Humble. Hector's my mentee. Right. We're but Timmy. <laughs> Timmy, Timmy. Come on now. How many mentors? No, it's true. No, it's absolutely would, true. Would be like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Hey. Yeah. This is where yeah, yeah. I'm just going to say this. Yeah, That's a, you know your soil. Yep. And, and I know every time you talk like that, it pushes some people. Yep. It, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. And I think part of the reason might be because so many are comfortable faking it like it doesn't exist. And that's why we see more falls than we should. Yes, sir. Because we got a lot of people acting like, oh, no, I don't feel that. Yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah. I don't think that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Listen. We're humans, yeah. and we've got to be able to talk about this is where I am that's, at. That's exactly you right. You and I, before you walk out on the stage, yeah. I know exactly what I'm doing. That's exactly right. That it's not the best time to talk to my best friend before he goes out to preach. Yeah. But I had to say, yes, this sir. is where I'm at right now. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. This is what, humbling myself to yeah. say, listen. That's right. I'm, things aren't terrible yeah but i have to be honest about yeah some things i'm feeling absolutely correct and just literally threw up on you yeah absolutely <laughs> and you as a great best friend for 30 minutes contained it. containment they're there and then walked out onto that stage <laughs> but this health always involves humility it does and to me, if we're trying to impress each other everyone's just gonna jockey and posture and then we sit at the table and act like, oh, no, I didn't feel that. Yeah. And then they get on, they go home, they get online. Yeah. They look at stuff they shouldn't be looking at. Yeah. Yeah. Well, bro, 
Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12, a- after he realized the thorn wasn't leaving, right? Well, well, therefore, I now glory in my weaknesses, right? If it ain't leaving, yeah. then I guess I'm going to talk about them yeah. <laughs> and my persecutions and my shortcomings and whatever else. Because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Right. Right. So that he's exercising and modeling for us humility, not to just, uh, that wasn't a letter to Timothy. That, that wasn't a letter to Titus. That, that wasn't an addendum to Philemon. That was to a whole church, fam. <laughs> he told a whole church. Yeah. I have a thorn. I prayed three times for the Lord to take it, and he wouldn't, so I'm stuck with it. So I need the whole congregation to know? I'm weak. And I'm your apostle. Like, I'm just trying to model what I read. Like, this is this is what this looks like. And you can always, you, you can always destroy ego. With honesty, openness, yeah. and transparency. But it's excruciating. It is. If you care too much about what others think, yep. it's oh, going yep. to be oh, for sure. excruciatingly Absolutely painful. Correct. Absolutely correct. And I think what helped me is to get to a place. So earlier on, the way I would think is, I don't care what you think. Mm-hmm. That's how I got around. Mm-hmm. I don't care what you think. Mm-hmm. That's actually not true. Mm-hmm. If someone says it like that, they mm-hmm. do care what you think. Mm-hmm. That, it's coming out in their tone. Mm-hmm. A healthy place is... It's okay. Yeah. No matter what you think. Yeah. So, 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 um, everybody has a six pack. Mm -hmm. Everybody does. For sure. Right. There's just some people that have a little insulation around that six pack. Mm -hmm. But with a proper diet and enough reps, it'll appear. You don't actually like make it appear it's there already right and i believe everybody's humility is underneath their ego Mm. and so in order for that like the reason why that comes so natural to me is because i have thousands of reps over the course of 27 years right on humbling myself. That's how I got here. It's not that uh, I just have lower inhibitions than the next man and, you know, I don't get embarrassed and I, I, I'm not afraid of what, how people might uh, walk away and perceive me, which I don't. But like, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, but even to say that, it took thousands right. of reps to get there. And so I just don't think enough people exercise right. their humility. You have to do this over and over and over. And if you're one of these people that you just come clean when you get caught, that's not actually humility. You got caught. (laughs) And they had proof. And so if you lied, it'd be an attempt in futility because we already know. Yeah. But when you can start saying, hey, I'm just going to be vulnerable with you. I'm going to tell you something that you were never going to know unless I said it. Right. Like you were never going to know it. Yeah. Unless I said it. And then you say it. And then you realize that person still receives you, still loves you, actually feels more endeared to you and closer to you. Right. I think I'm going to do that rep again. And so I do I do Navy burpees now, which are actually my, as, as much as I don't like working out, I work out because I just don't want Juliet to get remarried. So <laughs> I just want to, I told Juliet, I just want to live long enough where you can't remarry. So I'm thinking... When I'm 93 and she's 90, somebody probably won't come up <laughs> by me. So up until then, I'm just trying to live, okay? Eat right, you know, not have too many crazy uh, uh, foods in my system or whatever. Anyway, uh, those Navy burpees are unlike any other push-up combination burpee I've ever done. But I kept doing them until not I enjoyed it. Until my body knew, I guess this fool ain't going to stop doing these burpees. So shoulders square up, chest muscle up. He's just not going to stop doing it. 
So it's not that it gets easier. It just, once you crucify your flesh that many times, it just, no, he doesn't play with us like that no more. Right. I would love for him to stop exposing us. I would love to have a dark corner. One of, one of I think, the, the classic messages I ever heard you teach in my entire life, all the way back at seven, was to have no, no dark, dark corner. To have no dark corners in your life. And I don't like living with dark corners. I just don't yeah. like it. I, my, I lived my life in secrecy because of my sexual abuse from eight to 19, 11 years of silence. Once I told my parents that, and that was like a concrete slab came off my chest, I'm like, I can't go back to having no secrets. Yeah. That just seems right. foolish. So the, you got to have reps in this. Humility takes reps. Right. Thousands for of sure, them. but and I think an unrepped person listens to an instance where you say at a lunch table, "Hey, just need to say out loud, I, she's attractive." Yeah, to me, right, right. <laughs> I think an unrepped person would go, "I can't believe he just said that." Mm -hmm. And here, here, you know the phrase "skeletons in the closet." Yeah, you know, oh, you know. Like there's nothing worse than skeletons in the closet. Yeah. You know, there's actually something far worse than skeletons in the closet that I know about. Mm. It's live bodies being hidden in the closet. With duct tape over their mouth. Timmy. Mm, 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 mm. So which would you rather have? Someone who sits at the table and goes, just going to say this out loud. Yeah. Here's, here's what we have learned. All humans are just humans walking around in hospital gowns <laughs> we all are Great. the most Great. successful person on planet earth is walking around this earth with a hospital gown on with they back and out. if you choose <laughs> to only show your covered right side right that's your choice that's right but let's not act like but let's not act no like. let's not do that <laughs> let's not do that yeah let's not do that and the easiest way to live is just to go yeah I have yeah. gaps in my gown. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 um, is my all-time favorite great equalizer for anybody that feels like I, I can't tell anybody mm -hmm. anything because of what they'll think. There is no temptation that is overtaking you, but such as is common, common to man. You know who tries to make us think it's uncommon? Mm. The enemy. Mm-hmm. Don't you say that. If you say that, you're fired. If you say that, you're divorced. Yeah. If you say that, they're not going to like you. And he you. does it about the dark corners. Bro. Because he knows if I will allow a dark corner, I will eventually occupy a darkened room. Ooh. Okay, press. This is why he does it. And so he says at the <laughs> table, shh, shh, don't say that. Don't say that. Because he's always trying to lure us into That's right. darkened rooms. Mm -hmm. I got to finish the verse, though. But God is faithful, who would not allow you to be tempted above what you are able, but will, with the temptation, <laughs> provide in a way of escape so that you may be able to bear it. The way of escape does not come until the temptation mm -hmm. does. Because you don't need an escape until the temptation right. manifests. right. So what's my escape to someone I found attractive? Confession to the person that accompanies me on the trip. Now I got somebody watching my six. Right. Lights and we on. move right along. Let's see. Yes. Lights on. <laughs> I didn't even know this was going to be an issue today. But I saw a corner go dim. And I'm like, no, baby. Flick a light on. Go get a lamp from somewhere else. We... We had a light that went out over here, and we Blake had to go get another, get another lamp. Another one. Get another one because we ain't gonna keep it in the dark. We got lights everywhere. What we're not gonna do is keep it in the dark. Everything preaches. <laughs> so, yeah. This is I, I just love the. How can two walk together unless they're in agreement? I'm reminded so many times how much easier it is to run laps in this life mm. with someone mm -hmm. where we, we've talked about all of this stuff mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. this is none of this conversation is new for us together 
But We've normalized it. And that's the deal. Yes, sir. To, to where it's just, yeah. It's, there's no pulling teeth. No. It's, it's very, yeah. if you see something, if I see something. That's right. It, the lights are on. That's exactly right. So if, if that light switch ain't up with the lights on That's right. at the lunch table. That's exactly right. Then that means the switch is down. And here's what will happen. With the switch down, something else will be up. That's exactly right. And even though no one sees it. Oh, buddy. Timmy, I'd rather sit at the table and go, hey. And some might find it embarrassing. Yeah. And it's okay. It's okay. It's okay no matter it's what okay. you think. That's exactly but right. But I'm more concerned with going back to that room and the lights being on rather than there be a dark corner. That's exactly right. And the enemy have room yep. to mess with me. Yeah. So you're you're definitely taking humility into health. It go it seeps into every area it, of our it lives. It does. It really does. Because if I'm not humble, I'm just going to hide stuff. Yeah, absolutely correct. And if I'm going to hide stuff, yeah, I'm going to get hammered. Yeah. Uh one one of my um uh I have a business mentor who kept me from making the dumbest decision of all time because I called him and in humility told him, I don't know what to do. There was uh, a, a, basically an offer to help me take some money and do something creative with it. I didn't even understand what the heck the dude was talking about. And he kind of didn't either because he was like, uh, I want to set up a Zoom call with the other guy that knows how to say what I'm trying to tell you better. I'm always scared of that. Like, if you can't make it plain right. to me, I right. don't want to listen to the other dude because now I feel like I'm buying a car and you need to bring the sales manager in. Oh, yeah. right? It's just a weird feeling, right? So I got off the phone with him. I had this kind of buzzy thing in my chest, but I didn't know what to do. And so I called my friend who is a multimillionaire. Like he's sitting on a couple of few hundred mil, right? And I'm like, hey, I need some business advice. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, there's, there's some decisions I need to make with some money that I have. I want to be a good steward of it, but I don't know. This guy in 90 seconds set me so straight. But without humility, I make a judgment call. Whether I go with that, with the guy that gave me the proposal or not, I don't know what he was going to tell me without being humble right. enough to go, hey, can you tell me something that I don't know? Right. I didn't even know there was a third option. And that third option put me in a position to go like, I guess I'm in real estate now. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I would have never have known. Yeah. So I'm telling you, humility will let, will get you what you don't know. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What happened to Moses? Having a conversation with God. Show me your glory. That's humility. You mean to tell me the Red Sea being split wasn't enough of my glory? You mean to tell me manna coming down from heaven? Wasn't enough of my display of glory? Water coming up out of a rock? Quail running out of nowhere? Into your camp so you could have some meat? You want more? Get in the cleft of that rock. And I'll show you more than you've done. More than I can show you. I'm going to have to cover you sick because I'm going to show you so much. The whole book of Genesis was written off of some humility. Yeah. Maybe, you know, in hindsight, sometimes when we read scripture, we we kind of giggle at like, yeah, Moses called himself the most humble man. Maybe it's just fact. He was on to something. Maybe he was telling us the truth. I was. It's a cheat code. How did you think I got to do? Because I was humble. He told me to take off my sandals. <laughs> In that <laughs> desert, and I did it. I'm coming back with my wife. He tells me to circumcise my child. I, she does it, right? She knows, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, I do not want any more smoke <laughs> from your God, right? But everything he did 
It's because it was, humil it was humility. When God says, come here, after he strikes the rock twice and says, that's it for you, he humbly walks up the mountain. No, he's not going to the promised land until Jesus is on the Mount of Transfiguration. Humility get, will get you places. Yeah. It will help you take an L. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, he in here now. Humility will help you take an L. You won't gaslight and revise the story. I did that. I lost that opportunity because I made a huge mistake. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep, nope. I went through a divorce because I was the idiot in the relationship. And I put my wife in an untenable situation. And yep. I got to live with that L for the rest of my life. And here's what scares me about not taking the L. Anything you won't own, you're probably likely to repeat. And so if you act like, I didn't have anything to do with it, you're not going to own it. And if you don't own it, you're just going to return to your mama. You're just going to do the same thing over again and over again until you learn the lesson. So, um, first Pete, second Peter chapter number two, um, gets almost verbatim to what you said. Second Peter two twenty two. So this is two two twenty two. They prove the truth of this proverb. A dog returns to his vomit, and another says, "A washed pig returns to the mud." It, it's just a. If I took you, so I learned how to, to fly an airplane years ago. All the men in my family they fly airplanes. Okay, mm -hmm. and if I took you up in an airplane and we were both up front and I said, have you ever flown a plane before? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And you answered like that. I'm just going to assume now a great pilot wouldn't just assume, but for the sake of the illustration. Oh, okay. The plane is yours. That's what a teacher would say. The airplane is yours. <laughs> Let you fly. Okay. What if I did that when we were coming into land mm. at Scottsdale? Mm. You would crash. Oh, absolutely. We're dead. Okay. I know you well enough to know that if I said, have you ever found them? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've never even been in a plane that's that small. That's exactly right. That's Let alone fly a plane. That's, that's, I do not want to touch the control. <laughs> that's exactly right. Well, when we get up to altitude, it's not hard. Yeah. Would you like to do a few maneuvers? Yep. Oh, I would love it. Okay. Yeah. I will teach you. Guy. I'll show you. That's right. Okay. For some reason, up at 10,000 feet in an airplane, it's very black and white mm -hmm. and very easy to see. Mm -hmm. I've got to be humble because mm -hmm. if I'm not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mm -hmm. get killed. Mm -hmm. But on the ground with things we white knuckle, I don't know why it gets so hard. Preston, it's the same principle, Timothy. Preston, this analogy is you cooking right now. People act like it's, this ain't going to kill me. So I'm not going to. I don't understand. Once I figured out, even if it makes me look stupid to someone, saying I don't know, you don't know until someone tells you. But if I act like I can fly the plane, mm -mm. someone's going to say, okay, great, mm -mm. here. And then I'm going to be exposed. But worse, I could be, I could be kidding. Yeah, absolutely. It, the, 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 the imagery is, is very vivid because I'm thinking about all of the, um, all of the uh, scenarios by which a takeoff or a landing went wrong. Very rarely do, do things go wrong at thirty thousand feet. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to um, a person uh, on my pod a couple of weeks ago. She was in the entertainment industry for a while. Um. Aaliyah, who was an R&B singer, uh, died along with her friends, uh, some dancers and some people from her record label. There was too much weight on the plane. And they kind of pressed the pilot past his own comfort level. Mm -hmm. And because of her influence, they all died. 
Juliet and I were in the Bahamas. They were in Abaco. And it spread like wildfire. Wildfire. The news. And it was so depressing. Uh, the late, great Dr. Miles Monroe, the brilliance of the Bahamas, died in a plane crash on landing. They were coming in for a landing and clipped some piece of machinery and the plane goes up in flames. Very rarely do accidents or failures happen in the air, 30,000 feet cruising. But those takeoff and landings can be, you, you need to be aware the two most complicated times to fly an airplane are in takeoff and landing. Okay. At altitude, everything is. It's it's yep. dialed. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know? But Timmy, if people are acting like they've been there, if they act like they know what to do, what is wrong with just saying, I don't know? I don't know. And if we are in a car, if we're going to go to dinner after this, and I let you drive, this is my city. Mm -hmm. You don't know. And mm -mm. you don't have your phone, let's say. Mm -mm. And I go, we're going to go to this restaurant. If Tell me you, how to get there. <laughs> if you've never been, and I you know you've never me. been, because yep. the restaurant just opened up two weeks ago. Right, right, and right. you haven't been here in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I know you haven't ever been there. <laughs> For me to act like, oh, bro, yeah, yeah, I know about this place. <laughs> What? There's only one, and it's only in Scottsdale. No, no, no. I, I swear I was here before, and but, another friend took me. But do you look what? like an idiot? Yes. If you say to me, I've never been there. Nope. Tell me how to get there. You only look like an idiot if you act like you know. For sure. Do you look like a yeah. fool <laughs> if you say, I've never been there. Not Tell me how to get there. Exactly. Yeah, it's like, I, and I think the enemy gets involved, makes us feel like it's a really big deal. To say, I don't know. Yes, bro. Those are three of my favorite words. They're in three my of the wisest words. At, I, I, in leadership, it's three of my safest words. Is to be able to tell somebody I'm leading in my organization. I don't know the answer to that. Let's get you the answer, but I don't know it. And it's okay if we find it together. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. But let's just find the answer. That's right. That's right. I, I just, I thought I had to have the answers to every question. Mm. You, you know, you say mm -hmm. you're, you're such a great question asker. Want to know why? <laughs> <laughs> Crash your food plates. <laughs> because my entire life, <laughs> I've had more questions than I've had answers. Mm. Mm. And here's what happens when you keep asking lots of questions. What do you keep getting? Answers. Lots of answers. Lots of them. I'm a learner. I'm yes, a nerd. Sir. Yes, I sir. want more answers. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm sir. not going to get there yep. by refusing That's correct. to ask questions. That's correct. When we talk about humility and uh, we, we've talked about the benefits of humility, let's, let's just talk for a couple minutes in front of them. Mm -hmm. What do we feel like a couple of the life-altering benefits of humility are? A good reputation. Isn't that funny? Um, favor with people. The level of favor that is on my life, it's not because I'm charmed. It's because I'm stewarding a gift that I know came from God and I'm not walking around like that I'm the most important person in the room. It's an extravagant gift to give people. When you know and they know, God's giving you something. Mm -hmm. And it's special. But you're looking them right in the eye and engage with them and loving on them as if you don't have on a million dollar necklace. Right? I mean, it's just that disarms people. That en sure. endears people to you. I'll never forget Troy Good. If Troy Good ever sees this, Salute. I was in Martha's Vineyard with Juliet, Troy Good, and his wife. And we're walking around Martha's Vineyard. 
And he is telling me, he had heard me preach at his father-in-law's church. And he's like, dude, I don't know five people that have a gift like you have and da 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 He said, if you're this anointed to do what God has called you to do and you stay humble and you're nice to people, bro, mm. you're going to be a superhero. What great advice. I. The wisdom. I was like, first of all, I was learning something about me, right? Because most people are only curious about their critiques. I'm curious about my compliments. Mm. Because I want to make sure that I'm using the gifts that God gave me at a conscious competence and not at a subconscious competence. Mm. The people that walk around, what? This is just what I do. I don't understand. It's nothing. You you can't you can't really succeed and leverage unless you know what you bring. Yeah. Okay. That's great. That's a business one on one. That's knowing your value. That's being able to set your price. Fat Joe, yes, today's price ain't yesterday's price. You know what I mean? You got to know who you are and what you bring to the table. Yeah. And that's not arrogance. That's awareness. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> so awareness, okay? So he tells me that, and I'm like, I am going to be the nicest, most humble person because I the reason why it, it 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 registered and resonated with me so deeply, Prez, is because I've been in countless green rooms mm. with people that have incredible giftings and they are not nice. Yeah. And they are not humble. And I've seen the sizing up and the where are you at and who are you with and how big is the church? Are you even worthy of my time? Why are you sitting at the table with us? Isn't there a kiddie table for you to be at? And I'm over there like, like I'm throwing up in my mouth, bro. I want to project out vomit on them, right? Because I'm like, bruh. And then the, 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 the accoutrements that come with the, with that um, perceived arrogance, right? The, the special things that I need. I need green M&Ms that don't touch, right? I need room temperature power aid. I wish I was making this stuff up. I'm telling you what I've heard and known in my almost 30 years of being in ministry. The, I need a Starbucks order with three splashes of milk. And I have seen admins almost lose their minds trying to determine what is a, How splash? Much is a splash. I don't know what a splash is. And I don't want to get this man's order wrong. And I'm thinking, you can't preach unless you had his tea? Was this tea here when you got your call? Like, you know, I'm like, so it's a, it's a, again, this goes back to awareness and the reps to go, I know what God gave me, but in humility, It's a gift that's in me, but it doesn't belong to me. Mm. It belongs to the people. And I serve with that gift. I don't hoard it. I don't, it's not mine. It's just in me. But it's, he gave it to me to share with others. I don't think I've ever asked you about this because this is something, I mean, I, I, I feel like I got to watch you kind of blow up, you know, from the front row and behind the curtain. Uh, and one of the things that has struck me about your journey long before the basement um, is that as things, as the stage got bigger for you, your ego actually got smaller. Only you would be able to. And I don't think we've, I, I don't think I've ever asked you about mm -hmm. this because you're hitting on it, it's almost just normal for everyone to expect. Well, the larger the platform someone stands on, the more grace we give them to be jerks, egotistic, <laughs> maniacal, <laughs> you know. 
<laughs> when in fact Jesus was the antithesis of that. He, he had was. the biggest stage, a stage so big we still talk about it. That's right. But he literally was was just he yeah. was the epitome of what you're talking about. So I I how first, how old were you when you got that advice yeah. about staying humble and being nice? How yeah. old were you? Uh in I don't even know why I'm getting emotional with you asking me the question, but I was, I, I gave my life to Jesus when I was 20 and a half. So this is prior to me moving to Texas. Are you joking me? I'm Are not. you good, bro? That early? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm clearly the Lord knew. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I sucked my parents dry and, um, you know, the church I got saved in, uh, my parents passed that church for, 15 years and never got over a hundred people. They averaged about 50 people. Um, when I got saved, I got saved in January. My mom put me up to preach for the first time in February. And then they had me preach the last Sunday of each month for the remainder of the year. Those were the largest attended services. It's like 90 to a hundred people in those services. And, uh, my mom told me, she said, baby, God's going to do some amazing things in your life. But no matter how high he takes you, you will always be at the feet of Jesus. No matter how high you go up, you will always be at Jesus' feet. And so where, see, where people see elevation, I just see feet. Mm. I'm at the feet of my rabbi. I couldn't, there's no elevation high enough. What, I'm, I'm going to see eye to eye with him? <laughs> so I, that's been in my mind. That was in my mind before I got to Texas. I don't know if I should go here <laughs> with the camera rolling, but <laughs> so if I should, uh, but I, I just looking at, the, you know, as people watch you, not just watch the basement, but watch you navigate the growth of the basement and everything God's doing with you in this season. I think it might be possible for some people to be like, doesn't Tim understand how big his audience is? Mm -hmm. Quote, unquote. Mm -hmm. Like there are certain things you can do when you have a small audience, you mm -hmm. know, and they're like, well, you have too much to lose mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when you get a huge audience. Mm -hmm. When the reality is to you, it's no different than it was when there were 90 people in the room. That's the truth. You're doing your best to live at his feet. That's absolutely correct. And you legit aren't counting everyone. I can't. The numbers, the influence, can't. none of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. To where it, it's just, I don't know how you pulled it off. Yeah. Because I don't, I, one of my biggest questions, you know this, I've told you this. That as the Lord said, Preston, this is a new season for you. And yeah. I'm going to do some new things. My number one question, can I finish well? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're about to take me on some kind of ride, mm -hmm. can I survive mm -hmm. this ride? Mm -hmm. Absolutely correct. Yep. Because I, I haven't watched a ton. Mm -hmm. It's just tempting. There's temptations everywhere. Yeah, oh, absolutely correct. You know? Yeah. But you legit have navigated it. Where I really do think the bigger the stage you've gotten on, the more humble I've watched you get behind closed doors. Like that, and that's where you would see yeah. there was pride. In yeah. there. <laughs> like, this is, I, that's, we've seen it in green rooms. We've seen it in private. I feel like I've seen more humility in you mm -hmm. as the stage has gotten bigger beneath you. Yep. So there's a, um, there's a proverb for that, right? Coming from the guy who's spending the entire year in the book of Proverbs. Right? Like, that's the only way you can do this. All right, where are you? It's tatted. It's going to come up in a minute. Where are you? Uh, I don't think you're that far, though. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Uh, so this is Proverbs 27, verse 21. Fire test the purity of silver and gold but a person is tested by being praised. Yeah. Praise is a test. Now here's what 
here's what uh, the church has. We we always swing the pendulum the other way instead of letting it come down to the middle. We don't have a little stopper so I could just go like that and just come to the middle. So we wind up swinging all the way to the, the other side, extreme. Right? And so we confuse glory and praise. They're not the same thing. Only God can handle glory. But man can handle praise. Hmm. And man should be praised when they do a good job. But we have so much, we've muddied the waters with humility and false humility and now nobody can right. take credit for anything. It right. wasn't, it was all God, it was not me. You didn't study, you didn't prepare. I thought you wrote those notes. God, God gave you those notes and they should have been on tablets. And <laughs> you know what I mean? And it should be canonized now. And now we gotta go all the way back to <laughs> Israel and let them know we need to staple an addendum to the back of the holy Brit. It was right? teamwork. It was a partnership. It was partnership, right? So, so we, so, so praise is a test. And when I am praised, I have to be aware enough to know how much is mine mm. and how much is his. And I go back to 1 Samuel 17 for that. David runs out and with full self-awareness, grabs five smooth stones, runs out to Goliath and says, today the Lord yeah. will conquer you and I'm going to kill you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like He has a role to play. I have a role to play. He's going to do his part and I'm going to do my part. So, so uh, praise is a test and, and, and we can pass or fail it. Um, but I don't have a problem with praise. I just say thank you and I move on. Yeah. And it's a moment. It's a moment that I don't turn into a monument because a monument turns into an idol that you wind up worshiping for the rest of your life. And so um, you got to navigate praise. It, it, when it gets, Jesus, no man could take his life, he laid it down. So when they tried to kill him and it wasn't time, he slipped away. When they tried to crown him and it wasn't time, he slipped away. You just got to know when to slip away. Yeah. <laughs> it, when you got when you have unwarranted criticism, slip away. When you have unwarranted praise, slip away. When it's in context, just say thank you. Walk away. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how that's how I've handled it. To me. Sticking with praise, pride asks for more of it. Mm. Humility knows how to handle it. Absolutely. Humility knows it wasn't all me. Yeah, that's right. But that I did have a role to play. Oh, absolutely correct. Kind of my response. I don't know how everyone would handle it in business, but yeah. when somebody comes up to me after something, my thing, my thank you is, I'm grateful you heard the Lord speak to you. Yeah, it's great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm grateful yes. you heard the Lord speak to you. That's right. What I said. That's right. What I feel he gave me That's to right. give you. When I was walking in pride, here was one of my tricks. I would ask people to repeat themselves like I didn't hear them the first time. Mm. Huh? Mm. What? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm literally. Huh? <laughs> to me, huh? Was uh like I was I was focused somewhere else. Uh, did we say that again. Like it was the most <laughs> subtle and passive aggressive. Oh wow! Just repeat that for me, please. Right, right. <laughs> Timmy, you were young. I I, I young. love young Prez. He I was, was young. young yeah. I'm glad it was at 23 and not 43 because that I would be have a job. That, I we wouldn't I, be here right now. Wouldn't you wouldn't be job. asking this question. Well, uh, <laughs> let me let me correct myself, Lord. I might have a job, but I have no oil. <laughs> yeah, bone dry ministry, which means I wouldn't want my job. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but you do you learn some humility the hard way sometimes. Yeah, for sure. But it's always better to learn without having to make mistakes. Yeah, and humility is one of those things that we can learn from. Much who are our models? Yeah, you know. Pick a good model, yep. somebody that walks humbly. What does a humble leader look like? Yep. They, they don't have to be the loudest one in the room. Mm -hmm. 
they are uh, encouraging mm -hmm. of other people. Mm -hmm. that, that's a way to see humility. Mm -hmm. When someone pays genuine compliments to other people, that's a measure of humility. It is. When you have to receive all of the compliments and encouragement, pride. When Absolute you, pride. When you have to have the last word, pride. It's just not worth it. It's not. It isn't. And, mm -mm. and it's an exhausting way to try and navigate not just life, but a calling. I, I agree. A thousand percent agree. And learning is just so much fun. It is. It's I fun agree. not to know. And then for God to do some random thing mm -hmm. to show you, to teach you, mm -hmm. for someone else to show you, to teach you. Learning is just, it's fun. It is. But humility always involves an occasional, I don't know. And, and listen, we don't always have to say, I don't know. Like when I go into the elders, mm -hmm. my board, mm -hmm. and we're talking about the economic mm -hmm. scenario yeah. that, that we're in or, or stepping into, I don't start the conversation and say, I don't know. Yeah. Part of what I say is, hey, where is everyone on mm -hmm. this discussion? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to act like an idiot all the time. Because right. if, if you just say, I don't know, right. I don't know. Right, right, right. No right. one's going to follow that. <laughs> exactly, right. No one's going to get into your Uber if you say, I don't know how to get there. Okay. Find right. a way to get yeah. there. That's find the way. And so sometimes you just publicly say, uh, hey, where is everybody on this? Exactly. And That's then good. I wait till the end. Yeah, for sure. But there might be something I don't know. Correct. And multiple people in the room Correct. do know. Correct. So you just give them room yeah. to speak. That's exactly right. That's let exactly them have right. the floor. Deference. But if you're so busy trying to build a platform, you will rarely let anyone mm. have the floor mm. to speak. Mm. Truth. It's just going to be you. Yep. Uh, I, I just want you to know, you, you've taught me tons of things. But a confident humility, I, I, I told you this years and years ago. You've carried that balance since the day I met you. A confident humility. Yep. Because I think I'd, I'd been around some growing up in ministry. They ministered in insecurity. And so as soon as the message was done, mm -hmm. it was just, was that, was that any good? Was, right. that, was that? And, and it's, I never yeah. saw you mm -mm. do that. It, it, and it wasn't like, yeah, I, I did I, that. I, I did. Yeah, no. It was no, literally, no, 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 you no. go back into your office after a Friday night at yeah. Brick. Yeah. And I would see you move on. Yeah. To whatever was Oh, absolutely. Next. Oh, absolutely. Cause here's the thing, bro. I I don't have it in my head that I have to hit a home run. What's in my head is I got to get on base, mm. and I have enough faith to get on base. Yeah. If I close my eyes and that thing connects, and as I'm trotting to first base, I hear everybody start cheering and it cleared the wall, right? Amen. Great. But I'm just all I got to do is get on base. God God's gonna bring everybody home. Like, you know what I mean? The Holy Spirit's going to make all of this work. It's, this is not all on me. Yeah. Right? I don't think David knew that his first rock was going to kill Goliath. Mm -hmm. He just knew he didn't need a sixth. Ooh. That's what he knew. Ooh. That's confidence. Right? I, I know I have to do something. <laughs> I'm going to punch you right now. No, I'm going to punch you in the face no. right now. <laughs> I'm literally going to punch you in the face right now. You need to give me a moment. <laughs> he just didn't. What? 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 He just knew he didn't need a six. He didn't need a six rock. He said between one and five, you did. We didn't need the last hour. We 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 just needed the 60 <laughs> seconds right here. But that was literally David's confidence. David's confidence was between one and five, you're dead. You can duck the first one. You can barely miss the second one. But I'm going to size you up, fam. I'm going to, I'm going to, I got, by the fifth one, you're dead. And, and the, and we're done here because he told Saul because uh, because Goliath is the one that set up the conditions of battle. So all of us don't have to die. I'll be my I'll be my I'll be the Philistine champion. You bring out your champion. Whoever wins, it's an L for everybody else. Right. On the opposite time, opposite side. So when David volunteers, he says, I'll go kill him. And after back and forth with Saul and trying on his armor, he's like, yeah, I'm not going to be, let me go get five rocks. He has no backup plan. He has no sword. Between one and five, you're going to be dead, fam. That's, 
That's confidence. Now, if if you want some subtle, some 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 subtle juice that digging around the Bible gives. I want that juice. The 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 loudest indictment of this battle is that David, who is from the tribe of Judah, uses a slingshot to kill Goliath. The slingshot was what the Benjamites yeah. was known for. <laughs> so he killed Goliath with the tool. His own of his own Saul's weapon. tribe. His own weapon. His own tribe. The biggest weapon, indictment. Because he's never he never used a slingshot again. He didn't even kill lions and bears with slingshots. He said, I I run and grab them by the beard. And club them to death. <laughs> My man's gangster, okay. <laughs> but he, but this is a rock throwing contest, and it is a type and shadow of Christ, who throws Peter, who is a rock, <laughs> that the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. So my mind is all. When I got saved, coming from doing battle rapping and stuff like that, all I saw was confidence. Elijah. Boldly declaring to 450 prophets of Baal, let's have a contest. Mm -hmm. Call on your God, then I'm gonna call on mine. And then I'm gonna wet Put the water. Put water on the wood. Pour some water on the wood. Four times? So, so what people just see as this cinematic, they, they, we venerate these figures, we forget these are human beings. That are, that are by faith. Elijah is human, just like us. Confident in the Lord and confident in what, I'm so confident in this, you can soak the wood. Yep. And it's still going to burn up. When King James writes, and then the fire like burned up, consumed the, all, the sacrifice, consumed the wood, and then licked up the water. <laughs> <laughs> Child, listen, <laughs> that book is juicy, fam. That thing, that thing will never get old to me. But I see, I see Abraham's step as confidence. I see Jacob's step as confident. I see Isaac's steps as confident. I see Joshua's steps as confident. Moses, like, I just see these confident people stepping into the reality of their world and going, I just have faith and believe that God's going to be with me in this. Yeah. And so. And obviously that's carried on to the New Testament as well. When, you know, when when you get stoned and left for dead like Paul did, and then he come and he and and he pops up and goes back and starts preaching again, that takes some confidence. Right? Uh uh Acts chapter number four, when Peter and John get roughed up for healing the the lame man at the beautiful gate, they run back to where the other apostles are and they say, let's pray that the Holy Spirit would give us boldness so we can go do it again. So that's the narrative I see. And the only, in the book of Acts, the, the only cautionary tale that, that scares the heck out of me is um, uh, Acts 12. I got, I'll, I won't read the whole thing. I'll just read the, the part that's- While you're turning there. Yeah, I, super scary. You made me think of something as you're talking about this lineup. Mm -hmm. of godly humans God used to do very incredible things. Mm -hmm. A healthy human knows their limitations. Yeah. A healthy believer knows their limitations and that their God has none. Zero. And that's where the you're describing to me the balance because when I didn't understand humility, I thought if you were David, you had to walk out with your head down. Right, 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 exactly. And, and not look him in the eye, you know. And that's that's not humility. That's that's not humility. So so I can't resist the 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 metaphoric beauty of this. David not only didn't walk away with his head down, he walked away with Goliath's head. He had two heads up. I I love you. Like I love you in a way I can't describe. Chris. I I will I will punch you with your very own hand right now. 
<laughs> All right. So King Herod gives a speech in Acts chapter number 12. And then um, after he gives his speech, uh, verse 22, the people gave him a great ovation shouting, it's the voice yep. of a God, not of a man. 23. Instantly, an angel of the Lord struck Herod with the sickness because he accepted the people's worship, not praise, worship, instead of giving the glory to God. You're on it. He was consumed with worms and he died. And he died. Again, I can I, I praise my kids when they do a good job playing sports. Yeah. When they get A's, right? I praise you when you do a great message. I don't give you no glory. Right. <laughs> I don't start worshiping you. <laughs> hey, I'm, I don't go away going, I'm not going to listen to any more messages that you ever preach because that message right there, I just got that one on repeat for the next year. Okay, buddy. It's, it's going to get worms in it. That manna wasn't supposed to be used for three days straight, right? So, yeah. Confidence is... I teach people confidence because without it, you won't do, you won't do mighty things. You can't do mighty things self-consciously because you'll never know when you won. Mm. David knew he won against Goliath and it was a wrap. Saul never knew when he won. And that's why he ruled with intimidation and fear because he wasn't secure in his role as king to begin with. Yeah. And that's why he could throw a spear at David and his own son. Because he was self-conscious and not self-aware. And he was not, he was never confident as king, ever. Or else the song of those women wouldn't have bothered him. Because mm -hmm. first of all, it was an exaggeration. <laughs> Saul has killed his thousands, David his tens of thousands. That wasn't even true. But insecurity turns an exaggeration into the truth. Ooh. That's exactly right. Whereas humility knows its role. How does the, it depends on the translation, but David essentially says, I've seen my God deliver me from the lion and the bear. So he starts, and how did he deliver? By my own hand. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> like we did it together. Yeah, yeah we did it together. It's, it's, we did it. Was it was teamwork. It was. Right? And what do we see in the New Testament? The acts of the Holy Spirit through the apostles. Yeah. He needs a willing man and woman to partner with to go do, but we won't even, we, we cringe at God doesn't need anybody. Okay. But then he asked Isaiah, who will go? <laughs> so Lord have mercy. Either read the text right or stop. <laughs> but ain't nobody trying to remove the sovereignty of God and the fact that he needs no one. Y yes and no. It's not either or. Yeah. It's both and. Yeah. This is so, what a great way to end a conversation on humility, especially for literally me, the young me inside of me, where humility involves walking confidently mm -hmm. before God. Yes, it does. It does. Because yes. I, if, if humility is, if you're in Isaiah's place, well, I, I don't want to say me because I don't want to be that guy. It, not, you're the only one he God is. asked the question. <laughs> he <laughs> wanted you to answer it in the affirmative. I asked it in front of you so you would answer me. Here I am, send me. 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 Absolutely. And that's not arrogant. No, it's not. It's just humble yeah, confidence. That's exactly right. Well, if no one else, I'll go. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know others. I'll go though. Yeah, absolutely. Send me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Here, here I am. Absolutely. Here I am. Here, here yeah. I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just send me. Yeah. You can be both. You can. Humble. Yes, you can. And confident. Yes, you can. When we walk. That's right. With the Lord. That's exactly right. But when I distance myself. Oh. Humility. Is impossible mm -mm. when when you're trying to be confident. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely but, but correct. When you sit at the feet of yep. the one who holds the universe together, that's right. By the power of His word, that's right. One command. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get arrogant. 
You know who does the real stuff. But in order to fight this fight against his enemy and ours, yeah, we do have to walk in some godly confidence. We better. We better. We better. And that's we why, better. to me, what David did before Goliath is the testimony. That's right. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. testimony. Absolutely. I can be confident in absolutely. my testimony. He says, yeah. this is my testimony. Yeah, absolutely. This presence paraphrase. Yeah. I have seen God do this. Yeah. And I've seen God do that. Yeah. And he was describing things that he did. That's right. But he knew God was involved. That's right. So I just think if we, there's a lot of young bucks and I guess what we call them young does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be disrespectful, but yeah, the yeah. younger yeah. generation who may be throttling back because they think that's humility. Mm -hmm. And that's not how we win this war. Mm -mm. No, they got to step up. You got to step up. You do. Absolutely. Now, you don't have to bow up. No, not at all. But you do need to step up. Yeah, absolutely correct. Take your place. That's right. It's a place God established for you. That's exactly right. Knowing you won't be able to do it without him. That's right. It's a partnership. That's exactly right. That, to me, is fun humility. Yeah, it is. You know, it is. We do it together. That's right. And that's how he wants it. That's yeah. how we should want it. That's exactly right. Pride only wants to go it alone. Yeah, absolutely. Humility says, God, may we please do this? Yeah, together. let's go together. Let's go to, I don't want to do this for you. I want to do this with you. And that's why Moses said, only if it involves your presence. I won't take another step. Let's do it together. I'm not going unless you go with me. Easy to stay humble when you are at the feet of the creator of all things. Yes, sir. I love you so much. I love you too. I love you. Should we go have dinner? We should. We should go eat. Yes, we should. So you can go home and sleep. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, let's do it. Well, we love you so much. And trust that the Holy Spirit used this conversation in your life. Mm -hmm. And as I've started saying here recently, if there's anything you would love for me to be praying with you uh, or over you, put in the comments. I love to pray specifically over you not just when i reply to your comment but when i take it before the lord mm. uh, not on your behalf because you don't need a mediator you have jesus uh, and you can go boldly in to the throne room yourself but i love to agree with you so if there's anything going on in your world that you just want to put hey would you be praying about this i know i won't be the only one that prays just put it in the comments all right we love you so much can't wait to see you next time